Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's update on the Alberta wildfires. We'll begin today with updates from Cindy Evans from the Alberta Emergency Management Agency and Christy Tucker from Alberta Wildfire. Then we'll take your questions. Go ahead, Cindy. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Cindy Evans, and I am an executive director with the Alberta Emergency Management Agency. I am taking over duties from Colin Blair, who is moving on to support other aspects of the provincial wildlife response and recovery. The wildfire situation in the province remains volatile, and our thoughts are with those who have been affected by the fires. We recognize how difficult this situation is, particularly for those who have been evacuated or may need to evacuate in the coming days, or for Albertans who have experienced damage to their property. The safety of Albertans and the protection of their property is our ongoing top priority. Alberta continues to be under a provincial state of emergency and the Provincial Emergency Coordination Centre remains at level four. The fire danger is rated very high to extreme in northern Alberta and rated high to very high along the eastern slopes of the Rockies. There are currently 22 states of local emergency, five banned council resolutions, and an estimated 10,673 Albertans have been evacuated at this time. 14 reception centers are open for affected areas, and the total number of evacuation orders now stands at 17. All Albertans who have evacuated are encouraged to register either at their nearest reception center or online at emergencyregistration.alberta.ca. Registering makes it easier for evacuees to access help and resources. It also makes it easier for officials to reach those affected with important updates and information. We know that Albertans understandably have many questions about the status of specific wildfires in their area or other questions related to the current wildfire situation and the supports available. I want to remind Albertans that there are a number of places that they can go to get accurate and up-to-date information, including our daily telephone town halls held every day at 7.30 p.m. to answer wildfire-related questions from affected Albertans. To learn more about these calls or to listen online, visit alberta.ca. Alberta.ca is also a very good source of information on a variety of other wildfire related topics, such as evacuation and financial supports, the latest evacuation orders, and information on community reentry. Anyone living in a community that's on an evacuation alert should take steps to prepare to leave their home if needed. A few simple actions can help one be prepared to evacuate quickly and safely and make the return home easier. There is a comprehensive list of resources at alberta.ca. This site outlines all the steps needed to be well prepared if evacuated. Lastly, I want to highlight the poor air quality Albertans are experiencing in most areas across the province. Wildfire smoke can be harmful to one's health, even at low concentrations, and may fluctuate considerably from hour to hour. Alberta Health Services has good information on its website about air quality, advisories, and how to protect your health. The province is now into a very hot and dry May long weekend, and we are asking all Albertans to remain informed. Please continue to follow updates on the wildfire situation across the province and obey all fire bans and restrictions in place. And please stay safe. Thank you and I will now invite Christy to provide an update on behalf of Alberta Wildfire. Thank you, Cindy. There are 91 wildfires in the forest protection area of Alberta. 25 of those are out of control. So far this year, we've responded to 496 wildfires, burning more than 842,000 hectares. 
Last year on this day, we burned just 459 hectares. Not 459,000, 459. So this year's total is nearly 2,000 times last year's. And with the smoke still in the air in much of the province, it's a reminder of how intense this fire season is. Smoke makes it difficult for us to fly to assess and action wildfires from the air, but it does create cooler conditions that can weaken fire behavior. And we're still able to make progress on the ground with firefighters and heavy equipment out working on fire breaks and burnout operations and extinguishing hotspots. We're seeing scattered showers and thunderstorms uh, in the southwest boreal today and along the northern part of the Rocky Mountains. While showers will certainly be welcomed by firefighters, we monitor thunderstorms very carefully. With our lightning sensors, fire centers across the forest protection area know where lightning has struck. We can then send out patrols to investigate whether that lightning might have started a wildfire. We've already seen lightning strikes in the Edson and Grand Prairie areas today, and we are monitoring them closely. As we look ahead to the week, our forecasters are tracking a front moving into the province from tomorrow, which should bring much needed cooler temperatures, humidity, and even rain. What we'd like to see is a long, steady rain that will soak into the forest and into the ground. That will help us more than a short burst that would bring lightning and could spark a new wildfire. Boots on the ground today, uh, there are more than 1,700 staff from Alberta Wildfire working on these fires today. We also have a, a 1,112 brought in from across Canada and the United States. Once again, we appreciate the message of support we've received from Albertans. And most of all, we appreciate the actions of those who have adapted their plans this weekend to help prevent any further wildfires in the province. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. We will uh, begin with questions in the room and then move on to the phones. Please state your name and your outlet. Uh, each reporter will have one question and one follow-up. Are there any questions from media in the room? Seeing no one moving to the microphone in the room, we'll go to the phones. If you're on the phones and want to ask a question, just a reminder to hit star one to enter the queue. Operator, please, do we have any questions on the, on the phones? No questions on the phone at this time. Okay. Oh. Operator, do we have For a Arthur Green, Western Standard. Yes, we do. Arthur Green, Western Standard. Hi, thank you for, uh, for taking my question. So I was just about wondering that I think this question will be for Christy. Do we have an update on any more buildings that have been lost, or was that number still at 275? Um, that is a question for our friends at AMA who are tracking. Just to confirm, you are looking for an update on the number of buildings or the structures. Uh, right now, uh, the numbers that we do have are 275 structures. Okay, so that's still the same answer for that. Um, just another, another question that I have. Uh, how are like, the weeks uh, affecting the wildfires in Alberta right now? Could you repeat the question, please? I'm sorry, we had difficulty hearing. Could you repeat the question? Uh oh, oh not, not a problem. Um, we're used to have the showers and buffer swamps, like you said uh, today. How are the winds, how are the winds, uh, uh, sorry, how are the winds affecting uh, the wildfires today? How are the winds affecting the wildfires? Uh, well, as we know, wind is one of the, uh, the factors that can have an extreme influence on wildfire behavior, and uh, that was certainly uh, one of the major factors when we saw many of the wildfires that are currently on the landscape uh, grow a significant amount in a short uh, number of days. Um, and wind can be a massive factor. I think uh, we 
uh, we're preparing for the worst for this weekend. Uh, one of the things that we, we have seen, so particularly in the morning, is that we are seeing lower fire behavior than anticipated. And that is in part uh, because the smoke is creating a kind of co cloud cover. Now, uh, if you, there's smoke in the air, there's often not a significant amount of wind because the smoke will stay in place. And so that's one of the things that we have noticed. Winds have been lighter at, uh, at the moment than anticipated, and it's certainly helping to contribute to that lower fire behavior that we see, particularly in the morning. Now, as we move through the day, generally the pattern of, uh, of weather behavior is that we see uh, it warming up towards the early evening time, around the time many people are on their way home from work, that's when we can see the most intense fire behavior. And that's when we see the fuels are at their driest, and the air is warmer uh, than it is earlier in the day. And particularly with uh, many Albertans waking up to smoke, we notice the cooler temperatures, uh, the overcast um, uh, clouds, and, and that will help lower the behavior. But if you start to s uh, sense the temperature warming up, if you see the winds are starting, that could help invigorate some of the, the fire behavior. Thank you, operator. Can you put through the next question? Press Radio Canada. Uh, please go. Please go. Press your light is open. Sorry, forgot to unmute myself here. I'm just wondering if you have the last update on the Fox Creek fire. Uh, the last info we had was that uh, it was still holding north of the town about a kilometer from, from, from the town itself at the, the fire break. I'm just wondering if that's still the case. Uh, technically, the, uh, the Eagle Complex, which is uh, uh, two wildfires in the vicinity of Fox Creek and the municipal district of Greenview, particularly Little Smoky, uh, is, uh, it's still classified as out of control. Um, we have been seeing uh, what I've been talking about, which is lower fire behavior in the morning and a bit higher in the, in the evening as the day warms up. Uh, it's my understanding that Highway 43 was certainly affected by the smoke uh, over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, I understand it's uh, closed between Fox Creek and Little Smoky, but of course um, firefighters there are, are doing their best to manage the area and I believe they're working with the RCMP uh, there on that, um, on that particular area. Uh, one of the fires uh, has had some growth to the east towards Highway 43, but I understand that uh, that work is certainly continuing on uh, providing a fire guard with communities. As always, we focus our attention on where communities are most at risk. So that is where firefighters are committing uh, resources and time in ensuring they're reinforcing those guards so that the fire is not drawn towards any more uh, structures. And do you have a follow-up? Yeah, just a quick follow-up. So, so the last time we had any, I think, sort of significant rain was, was about two weeks ago. Uh, and we saw fires, uh, lesser fires activity, the number of fires dropped down to 76 uh, or, or something around that. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you're able to compare that last rain episode to the one we're expecting starting tomorrow night, like are, are they of similar magnitude or, or and should we expect similar results or impact? Well, the, the accuracy of, of forecasting, even uh, fire weather forecasting, uh, becomes less uh, certain as, uh, the, you know, the further, uh, further down you go. But we are anticipating uh, hopefully a few days of cooler weather. Um, more precipitation, rain, and the precipitation will help with the general humidity across the province as well. A lot depends on where exactly uh, that rain falls. Um, uh, rain is not a uniform and, and weather can be unpredictable. So certainly it will depend on whether the rain is falling directly on some of those fires. But in the area we're expecting it, it should, um, it is uh, forecast to, to make a big difference in our general indices that we're looking at when we're measuring the danger for wildfire. So uh, a map that at the moment, heading into the long weekend, is, is pink and red, which is not what you want to see. It indicates uh, extreme fire danger. 
in the next few days, it's looking a lot more blue and green, which is certainly something that's going to assist firefighters and help us in assigning our resources. When we have a lower fire behavior, potentially a, a significant amount of precipitation, which is what we'd like, we'd like a nice steady rain for a few days, that would help us a significant amount. Something that will soak into uh, the forest floor. Um, some of those fires out there are in peat, uh, which means it can burn down as well as across. And that means it can be very difficult to put out in the short term. So we're looking for some moisture that is really going to soak the ground and will assist us uh, not just in the short term, but in the longer term by providing some of that humidity, making it harder for fires to spread even when the rain stops. Thank you, operator. Please go through the next question. Hello, Corbett, local news. Hi, yeah, I'm just uh, wondering, regarding the fires here near Fox Creek, um, there are several crews from like Ontario, Alberta, Newfoundland, and Quebec that are working as we understand it, the military, I'm just wondering if you could speak to how much coordination is required to make sure that, you know, these crews from all over Canada and the U.S. are kind of working together. Um, just kind of wondering if you could kind of speak to that, just the coordination communication that's involved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that we do deal with every year. Either uh, if we require extra help here in Alberta, we will bring in resources uh, through the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre, and we export just as many firefighters as we bring in when our, our other agencies are having a difficult season as well. So one of the benefits of, of working through the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre is ensuring that we have the same standards, we have the same training, we have the same safety practices, we have better ways of communicating with each other, and certainly that cooperation is something that we have been practicing year in, year out for quite a while now. So uh, there is a real benefit to these agreements that we have, even outside the Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre. We have agreements through the Northwest Compact, which is a separate agreement uh, with North Northwestern uh, states and provinces. And again, it's, we can ensure that we have the same standards, the same training and expectations, equipment and understanding, so that when you are working with these diverse groups of people, we all speak the same language and then we can understand each other very well. And certainly I know they've been integrating uh, the armed forces uh, firefighters into operations and uh, giving them training that's needed for the specific type of basic firefighting that they're helping with and uh, ensuring that everyone is working together, uh, understanding each other and being able to be moved around from fire to fire where they're needed. Do you have a follow up? Yeah, and just kind of on that note, is it Alberta wildfire then that ultimately um, like individuals here on the ground that ultimately decide the strategy? We would have it, every uh, major fire will have an incident commander and an incident management team in place. And you have people there whose job it is to, to think a few steps ahead on, on addressing a fire and how best to tackle it, what tactics they need to use. So the incident commander will be making those decisions and they will be uh, using the resources that are available to them and, and communicating. Also all of the agencies that we're working with will have an agency representative based here in, in Alberta that we can uh, communicate with very easily. So we know the importance of talking to each other during a fire, and that is certainly something that we, we prize very highly so that we can make sure that everyone is on the same page and that uh, you can't tackle um, a fire season like this if you're not organized. Thank you. Operator, can you put through the next question, please? Norman Issa, CGP Edmonton. Hi there. I'm just wondering, you mentioned that today in Ethnic Grand Surrey that there were um, lightning strikes that were um, that happened, and I know that you guys like to monitor for fire activity from lightning strikes from the sky, but because of the heavy smoke, that's tough. So how do you go about monitoring lightning strikes when you're not able to get into the sky, you know, from the sky? We do have sensors uh, around the province that will tell us the location of lightning strikes. 
Uh, if we are not able to fly, if the smoke is uh, incredibly thick, we will make use of, uh, of what um, resources we have. So obviously people are very mobile on the ground. Uh, we have crews who can travel um, by truck and uh, we do have people spread out all through the province. Uh, and so that is certainly one of the things that we have fire centers all across the forest protection area as well as camps. Uh, close to where all of our major uh, wildfires are burning. So there are a lot of firefighters out there and we make use of them uh, to check out where we have lightning strikes in just to ensure that we can attack uh, a fire before it grows. And do you have a follow-up? I'm good, thank you. Okay, operator, please put through the next question. Josh Paul, RD News now. Hi there. Um, I was just hoping um, to get a little bit of clarity on the situation with Little Smoky. Um, obviously, it's a very small community, um, and the evacuation order there has been in place for a couple of weeks now. Um, today, the, uh, the order changed a little bit with uh, residents from Little Smoky um, now going north, as, as we know, because the highway is closed going south towards uh, White Court, where evacuees from Fox Creek are supposed to go, and that's where people from Little Smoky were supposed to go. But um, I'm just wondering if I could get some info on A, um, where Little Smoky folks are supposed to go now, specifically, but also um, hand in hand with that, is there anybody actually known to still be in Little Smoky uh, now with two weeks having gone by with the evacuation order? I'll ask Cindy to assist with that. 